So I didn't quite get the honor of being the last speaker, but I guess <laughs> I can unlock that and cheapen some other day. Um, so yeah, this is joint work with Martin Albrecht and Kenny Patterson. Uh, just a quick outline of the next 20 years minutes. Can you hear me here? I should go closer. <laughs> I'm a bit tall for this. Here you go, maybe it's better. Uh, a quick outline of the next 20 years minutes. So first we'll go over some motivation. Um, and then I'll introduce to you the Lib Intermac, which is the library we built. And then I'll show how we use Lib Intermac to implement new SSH encryption schemes. Uh, okay. And I guess I have to start over. Lib Intermac. Uh, I don't know what's going on. There you go. So you all probably know and use SSH. It's a very widely deployed protocol that protects a large amount of traffic. Uh, the SSH uh, transport layer protocol, which is called the binary packet protocol, uh, defines the packet format and the cryptograph uh, cryptographic processing you, you do on them. It provides the fundamental security guarantees of SSH, which is confidentiality and integrity of data. But SSH actually aims at going beyond those fundamentals. So RFC 4251, which defines the overall architecture of SSH, um, lists a number of other security guarantees that SSH wants to provide. And we want to focus on two of these, denial of service and traffic analysis. And we're going to consider these as uh, properties of SSH encryption schemes. And by doing that, we can actually formally capture what it means to be secure against denial of service and traffic analysis. So the tool we want to use, that we are going to use for this is uh, work by Boldreva, Degabelli, Patterson, and Stamm from 2012. So they introduced the notion of symmetric encryption schemes supporting ciphertext fragmentation. Uh, so how does this work? So uh, let's say that Alice uh, produces a ciphertext and sends it to Bob. So the normal assumption you're, going, you're making is that Bob's received this ciphertext in its entirety. You, you can, sometimes you also call this uh, atomic delivery. But, oh. but that completely uh, neglects that when, when traffic or data traverses networks, there's a chance of arbitrary fragmentation. So the ciphertext C might arrive at Bob in fragments. And you, I guess I, these. And we would call these ciphertext fragments. And it's then up to Bob to somehow encrypt these fragments, but still arrive at the underlying message. So it's this induced fragmentation uh, that BDPS calls ciphertext fragmentation. And that's what we're going to use to, to formally define these uh, security properties. So BDPS, together with Albrecht, Degabielli, myself, and Patterson, defined a number of different security notions in this setting. There are the fundamental ones of uh, confidentiality and integrity, but also two more advanced ones that is called boundary hiding and DOS. I will, I will give you a flavor of how this works, but I, I, I'm not going to venture into the nitty-gritty details. So boundary hiding is, is going to capture security against traffic analysis. And it essentially says the following. So if the adversary is giving a, a sequence of ciphertext, then it's impossible for the adversary to delineate the ciphertext boundaries in this sequence. There are two versions of this. There's a passive version where the adversary only has access to the encryption oracle. And then there's an active version where the adversary also has access to the decryption oracle. The DOS notion is going to capture security against denial of service. And it's parameterized by a parameter a lambda. This notion is very, it's, it's kind of technical, but essentially says that no adversary can make Bob hang uh, or wait uh, by making him expect more than lambda amount of ciphertext. So this, says, this essentially says that the lower the lambda is, the better Bob is at detecting denial of service attacks and the faster he can respond. Two seconds. Okay, so SSH supports a number of different encryption schemes, all listed here. Uh, and ADPA, ADHP did a study uh, where they analyzed these schemes with respect to the security notions we have just seen. And it turns out to be a pretty negative study, probably not as bad as Brexit, but close. So uh, 
only ChaCha and ChaCha Puli and Encrypt and Mac uh, meets the boundary hiding, uh, the passive notion for boundary hiding. However, these two schemes has other noticeable drawbacks in the context of SSH. First of all, Encrypt and Mac is not generally secure, which was both proven by Albrecht, Patterson, and Watson in 09, but also by ADHP. And I guess we can all agree that encrypting or decrypting on unverified data is probably not very good. All right, so even though ChaCha is a ChaCha pulley, is a very great scheme, it can utilize AES intrinsics, which is pretty bad in, in some uh, popular context, context where SSH is used. Um, so we see that none of the current SSH encryption schemes adequately provides the desired security properties. So two natural questions to ask are then, can these security properties be realized simultaneously in SSH? Uh, and at what cost? Oh, shit. Oh, no, you saw over it. I guess kind of finished now then. All right. So to answer this question, is maybe not a surprise that we're going to start out with looking at this scheme called Intermite. So this scheme is pretty simple. I'm going to explain how it works. So giving a message, this message, you first split it into equal size chunks of length n, counting in bytes. Uh, then this n you call the chunk length. You then encode each chunk with a byte zero, except the last chunk which you will encode with a byte one. You then encrypt each encoded chunk, and you compute a mag over it. Uh, but you see that to, to be able to prevent reordering attacks, you have to include two counters into the mag computation. Okay, so and to arrive at the final cyber attack, you just concatenate everything together. And to decrypt, you just shift your gear into reverse, you verify the MAC, you decrypt, and then you inspect the encoding byte. And if this encoding byte is the one, you have, re you have recovered your plain text. All right, so this scheme was also proposed by BDPS, and they proved that it achieves confidentiality, integrity, denial of service, and DOS. So we want to go ahead and, and implement this, but before we did that, we realized that BTPS kind of cheated because this scheme only supports messages that are it's a multiple of n, which is not really good in practice. Uh, luckily, there's an easy way to resolve this. We just apply some padding. Now, the padding scheme we're going to use is pretty simple. If the last byte of the message is just is zero, you just pad with ones. And if it's not zero, you just pad with zeros. So it's pretty simple. Uh, we did some other changes to the Intermax scheme. We also didn't want to add padding if the message was already a multiple of n. So we encode this information in the last encoding byte of the, the last chunk. Oh, we also replaced this uh, encrypt and MAC construction with more modern, non-spaced, authenticated encryption schemes. Uh, by doing that, we somehow need to figure out a way to include the counters to prevent reordering. Uh, we do this by generating the nonce from the counters. Oh, and then we proved that the, this modified Intermax scheme achieves all the same security notions. Confidentiality, integrity, boundary hiding, and DOS. All right, so we went ahead and implemented this, and we called the implementation lib Intermax. It's a C implementation, and we kind of tried to make it a fun library to use. So we have a small API, which should also make it easier to use. Uh, we completely removed the responsibility of nonce management away from the user. Uh, and and handles all this internally. We also have a feature of algorithm agility with respect to the underlying, <coughs> underlying uh, non-spaced encryption scheme. And right now we have code for ASTCM and Chata Pulley. And I should note that you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, so I overload the naming here. You shouldn't confuse these two with the SSH encryption schemes of the same name. The SSH encryption schemes uh, the definition of those and the name you use of those includes more. It also includes uh, encoding and processing of packets. Anyway. So another thing I will mention is that we, we try to identify attack vectors that goes beyond uh, the formal model uh, and implement countermeasures against them. So I'll go into a bit more detail of, of one of these. Um, and it kind of shows that even though Intermac has a really, really simple description, you, you, you kind of have to keep track of a lot of things when you, uh, when you have to implement it. So one issue we identified was with the, de the decryption algorithm. 
So let's, let's, let's uh, rewind a bit and go back to the boundary hiding notion. <coughs> so recall that it says that uh, the adversary cannot delineate ciphertext boundaries in a sequence of ciphertext here. But the thing the adversary can do is to measure the response time uh, from the decryption algorithm of Bob. And this is not captured by the formal security model. Um, so if this response time is, is somehow ciphertext boundary dependent, then Bob, uh, sorry, the adversary might be able to delineate the ciphertext boundaries. So to combat this, we have to make sure that the execution time <coughs> of the decryption algorithm is independent of ciphertext boundaries. So one source of non-uniform response times can come from padding removal. So remember you do, you do this when you decrypt the last chunk and you inspect the encoding byte, and if this encoding byte tells you that there's padding, then you have to remove it somehow. The first thing you have to do is to figure out how much padding there is. And the most optimal way to do this is probably just to start from the end and then do a backtrace until you find a byte that is different and that will reveal the, the amount of padding you have. However, obviously, this takes time proportional to the amount of padding, which kind of reveals the, the boundaries, the server takes boundaries. So, I'm moving this. So we implement a constant time padding removal function, and what it does is that it searches through the whole chunk. So it visits each byte exactly once. And we also invoke this algorithm on all chunks of all messages, not to leak which chunk you're removing padding from. So obviously doing a linear search over all chunks, chunks of all messages kind of must add some overhead. So we did a study to show how much that is. So we decrypted an eight kilobyte message for different chunk links. Uh, and where we implement a decryption algorithm with constant time padding removal and another one with non-constant time padding removal. <coughs> and this, this uh, simple study showed that using a constant time padding removal algorithm slows the decryption down with a factor between four to five, which is kind of significant. But we wanted to make, uh, to have maximal security, so we still implemented the constant time version. Okay, so we identified additional timing channels of the same uh, format, and we implemented countermeasures against them. However, in the code, there are still some branches that depends on ciphertext boundaries, so we cannot really claim that we have a full constant time decryption. Um, we think there are still some, a lot of OMA problems in this area, and I, um, and I guess I can use that as a shameful plug to make you read the paper if you want to know more. All right. So we also looked at how, uh, how the performance is for lift intermag, and kind of did some ex ex uh, extensive benchmarking. Uh, we did it for four different, four different message lengths, uh, and this shows the decryption uh, encryption algorithm where we use AES-DCM as the internal non-spaced encryption scheme. The y-axis denotes the chunk length and the x-axis denotes the performance measured in cycles per byte. And if you go through uh, this chart, you'll see that for each message length, the optimal performance you can achieve is between 1.4 and 2.5 cycles per byte. <coughs> so it's not, it's not that bad. The story completely changes for decryption. So here you have a, a slowdown of a factor of 10. And much of that you can trace back to this constant time pattern removal. It slows even more down if you use Shatter Pulley, uh, which, has a, which slows it down with a factor between 25 and 35. So obviously, these measurements are done on a machine that supports AES intrinsic. So, I mean, that's why Shatter is, is quite a lot slower. However, we didn't think much about speed, so we still think there's a lot of proof. Uh, in, there's still a lot of room for improving these these measurements. Okay. So now we have a, a solid scheme on implementation of Intermac, and we want to see how, and we see how, and we wanted to see how it performs in SSH. <coughs> so to do that, we implemented Intermac-based encryption schemes in OpenSSH. So this required us to do a number of changes to, to OpenSSH. So this is the SSH packet format. It contains a length field, padding length field, that measures this amount of padding and stuff. But 
mo most of these fields actually becomes redundant when you use Intermac. You don't really need them to process packets anymore. So we removed them. We also implemented standalone code path for Intermac encryption and decryption. This first of all circumvents some really bad history of, of some of their open SSH code. Uh, but we also needed that because Intermag is kind of uh, really different from some of the other uh, encryption schemes that OpenSSH supports. Uh, and for that same reason, we had to implement some non-standard buffering of the output from the uh, Intermag decryption algorithm. Uh, so if you sum all this up, this kind of shows that if you want to integrate Intermag into your application, it can become quite complex, unfortunately. All right, so we did two, two studies to see how how well Intermac performed in SSH. So the first study, we, we transferred uh, 50 megabyte using SCP, and I know SCP is not really good, but that's what we had. And we want to use SCP because it's an SSH-based uh, transfer protocol. So we did this between two uh, EC2 instances in two different availability zones on AWS. And by doing it between two availability zones means that the distance is really short. Also, the network is extremely fast. So the first optimization, uh, optimization, the first observation you can make is that <coughs> the Intermac encryption schemes in, uh, that we implemented performs kind of on, on the same level as Chatterpoli, the Chatterpoli scheme in OpenSSH. And Chatterpoli is currently the default the encryption scheme that the OpenSSH use. A general observation you can make is that uh, this performance seems to be computationally dependent. This kind of changes in, in the second experiment we did. So here, instead of doing it between two availability zones, we did it between two different regions. So this means that the distance greatly increases, but also the network becomes kind of uh, not so good. And it's clear to see that uh, performance is no longer computationally dependent, but it's probably more network dependent. And it has a really great similarity with this other graph over here uh, which shows the ciphertext expansion for each uh, encryption scheme in OpenSSH. So for the existing schemes, this is just some of them, there are many more, um, those, it's quite uniform. It's not much difference between the schemes. This changes completely for the Intermax schemes where we have a great variety of different ciphertext expansion amounts. Um, and the reason for that is because of the padding and how this padding, or how the the messages fed from this SCP application down to the transport layer interacts with the chunk length from this padding, which creates this really weird distribution. Uh, but we observed the cybertech expansion between 10 to 35% for the Intermax schemes, which is quite a lot. It also creates this funny thing there. Anyway, to conclude, um, so the answer to the first question is yes. Uh, we implemented Intermax. We also try to identify issues that goes beyond the formal security model. And we think that our intermac based encryption schemes in OpenSSH kind of captures the desired security that SSH wants to provide a bit better than the existing ones. But using Intermag also adds some cost or overhead. Uh, so we observe increased complexi complexity <coughs> in integration and implementation. Uh, this affects performance to some extent uh, but depending on your use case, this might or might not be tolerable. And you can find our, go our code on uh, GitHub, or you can hit us up on Twitter. Thank you. Uh, questions? Um, don't you think that having this new library is also, couldn't also be a good opportunity to implement some of the CISA algorithms, and do you have plans for that? That would be a no. <laughs> no. No to which question? A plan or a good, isn't it a good opportunity? None of uh, them. I, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, everyone can implement it. It's pretty easy to implement new schemes for... Let's go all the way back. There you go. It's pretty easy to do this in LibIntermac. So I made it easy to for other users to actually implement schemes. You just have to uh, program against an, an interface and then you can quickly use it. So, I mean, anyone is invited. Thanks. Uh, 
if there are no further questions, then thank the speaker again.